Okay guys, hello to my TriDAC auditioners. I wanted to go over these requirements and see if I can help clarify some of these things. Of course, if there are any questions that come up, um, you know, I'm here so you can get in touch with me, but I thought it would be a good idea to go over the requirements and um, just give you some advice and let you know what I know about the process. So the first thing here, what we are looking for in a student during the audition, um, these are, this is the reason that I nominated you to audition for TriDAC. So I believe that you already have these things, um, that you're physically and verbally express your passion for the visual arts, <clears throat> that you sh show a strong desire to work independently and diligently on skills, techniques, and processes. You display a willingness to accept constructive criticism or positive feedback to help improve your skills. And you demonstrate strong observational skills and eye-hand coordination. So this section, you're already good, because I believe I, that's why I nominated you. Now, this is where, this is your audition here. There are three components that are going to be part of your audition. And so I wanted to just give you some heads up what I know about this. I've never auditioned for TriDAC, but having students have, who have auditioned in the past, I know a little bit about some of this. Um, the creativity test, I don't know much about, but that should be fun for you. Contour line drawing. Um, most of you guys, we've done this in class, so you'll be familiar with that process of contour line drawing. If you have any questions about that, just look up contour line drawing on YouTube. There's lots of demonstrations, but I think for most of us, we've done this in class. And then a still life drawing. So we haven't actually done still life drawing in class recently. Let me show you some examples of still lifes some from, um, from art history. All right, here you can see some examples from art history of still lives. Now, still life is when an artist or someone, in the case of this TriDAC audition, sets up, a, sets up an arrangement of objects that are still, so not a puppy, but, you know, a bunch of things that are just going to sit there, like fruit and bowls and plates and instruments and anything you can think of can be, that still can be part of a still life. And they set that up. Then they choose a, a point of view where they're going to sit to look at the still life, and then they reproduce what they're looking at. It's a popular way for artists to practice their skills, and they're going to be watching you as you as you draw or paint. We'll see what kind of media they have for you um, at the audition. So they'll have it set up. It'll probably be one where it's 360 degrees, like it's interesting from any way around it instead of just having a front. Um, so you'll have a spot and you will choose a section of that. You don't have to draw the whole thing. A lot of times artists will zoom in on one part of a still life to draw. So you'll pick what you're going to draw, um, what part of that still life, and then you will reproduce it, just as famous artists have done throughout history. Okay, so there are some examples of some still lifes and what you might anticipate for that in the audition process. And of course, they'll provide all the materials that you need for your art making, like this might be a painting or drawing, who knows what. But they're gonna provide all those materials for you. So this is the workshop component, where while you're at TriDAC, part of your audition will be them watching you actually create artwork. Okay, so that happens there. So there's really not much you need to do to prepare for that. Portfolio review. This is going to be this is going to be the biggest part that you're going to have to do work for prior to your audition, um, and and we're going and I'll go over that in depth with the different pieces that you need to have as part of your portfolio. Um, so and you'll take it with you. You'll bring it there and you'll take it home with you as well. <clears throat> the interview. So this one. This is where practicing can help you. Practicing talking about your work, which is something that you might not be that familiar with, will help you to prepare for the interview. Also remember, and, and you guys know this, but just to give you a reminder, you want to um, dress well, good eye contact, you want to be respectful, and if you need time, if they ask you a question and you feel like you don't know the answer to that, it's okay to say, um, let me think about that for a minute, or can we come back to that? You, this is not a test. Um, you know, this is just for them to get to know you as an artist. So don't get too stressed about this, but I would practice with an adult um, talking about your work so you're more familiar with that. And when it comes, when they're talking about design and composition, that's where you're going to think back to 
your elements of art, which we talk about in art class all the time, the elements of art, and those principles of design. Okay, so how did you use the elements and principles of art in the creation of your artwork? So you'll need to be familiar with those terms. And I have a, um, another thing I'll show you here that might help you with that. We don't really use these in art class, but I do have art textbooks. And in the back, they have a glossary, which I think could be really helpful for you as you're thinking about talking about your artwork and familiarizing yourself with some of the terms that, um, that you're going to want to use, but you might feel less familiar with. So if you want to come into the art classroom and borrow one of these textbooks um, to look at to help you remember what these terms mean and just to, just to refresh your memory on art terms like texture. You're going to know what a lot of these mean, but you might have forgotten some of that vocabulary. Um, so I think this would be a good resource for you to help just refresh your memory on some of those terms. Okay, so um, so that will help you when you're, that's what they're talking about with design and composition. <clears throat> you also want to be ready to talk about yourself as a student and a developing artist. So that's going to be different for each of you. Again, I think practicing with an adult and talking through some of that will help you in preparation. Okay, be prepared to talk about an artist that inspires you. All right, we've studied a lot of different artists in the art classroom from art history, but there may be artists that you're familiar with that we haven't talked about, and that's fine. But I would um, do a little bit of research on your artist so that you have a little bit um, of information to talk about, something to pull from. So be prepared to talk about an artist that inspires you and why. And guys, this could be somebody you know. Um, maybe there's an artist in your family or a local artist that you know. It doesn't have to be somebody like uh, Vincent Van Gogh or Chuck Close that we've, that's super famous that we talk about in class. And then the final thing here on the interview is that you're going to present one of your artworks. That's going to be number four, so we'll talk about that in just a moment. You're going to um, present that work of art and discuss it using an appropriate art terms. Again, design and composition, and that's where those art terms in that book might help you um, as you're preparing to discuss your work using the correct terminology. And of course, I can help you with that, and if you want to practice, if you want to come in and practice talking to me, then, um, then I'm available for that, of course, as well. Okay, your portfolio. This is what's going to take the most amount of time because you have to create four artworks specifically for this audition. This can't be work you've already created, unfortunately. One is draw a still life from observation that includes three objects that portray or represent you. Okay, things you like, things about your personality. Okay, things of things that think of things that could symbolize you. Um, and it doesn't have to be direct, as direct as, you know, I like ballet, so put a ballet shoe. It can be um, more, it can be deeper than that. You know, it can be, that, that could be an example, but um, it doesn't have to be super uh, clear like that. And again, with the still life, you can look back up here where um, you're going to be doing a still life at, at the audition, but you will have already had a practice drawing a still life. And we've talked about that. Um, a little bit there, so you should be prepared for that. Now this next one, using mixed media, create an artwork of a landscape or a cityscape. Let me show you some examples of that from art history. I think I mostly have landscapes, but you can choose a landscape or a cityscape. Let me show you that. Okay, so a landscape or a cityscape is a picture of a place. A landscape, a picture of an outside place, and a cityscape, a picture of an outside place but with more of a city atmosphere than like a rural landscape or just a natural setting. So here's some examples of some landscapes and then also have some cityscapes here. So you'll decide whether you want to do a landscape or a cityscape. And another thing then to keep in mind is this must be a mixed media piece. Now I did an online search just now for mixed media cityscape and I even found not only this example of this artwork you can see here, but the artist went through and showed her whole process for creating the artwork. So if you get stuck with mixed media, then you, there's lots of resources online where you can see examples of other people's artwork that you wouldn't copy, but they can help you come up with your own ideas. Now some mixed media artists that you might be familiar with are Jasper Johns. He was a famous artist from South Carolina. We studied his work years ago um, when you were a bit younger, but 
he's famous for this three flags and you can see here in this piece it's called three faces but it's got a mixture of media so he's got sculpture and painting and he's often got collage as well here's Romare Bearden who does a lot of mixed media work mixed media means the artist used more than one media one art making material to make the artwork so it's got sculptural elements and also painting or it's got printmaking and drawing or it's got collage and painting it's where you take not just one technique for creating an artwork but multiple ones and then bring them together to create a mixed media piece so you'll be able to use mixed media to create either a cityscape or a landscape okay guys now, and mixed media. Make sure you're focused on mixed media with that. And I showed you some examples of some mixed media artists as well. Now, this final one, create a self-portrait. Unfortunately, again, you cannot use the one that we create in class. You have to create one independently for this audition. Um, but you know about creating a self-portrait. Here's a couple from art history for you to take a look at. I like this compilation. This is just a grid with multiple, many examples of artist self-portraits from throughout history. And of course, you can take your own direction with this. Okay, and your final component to your portfolio, so you have four pieces of artwork, and your fourth one is your choice. Okay, so this is where you just get to, I love working with whatever media is your favorite. Um, this is where you get to make something of your choice, just like it says, okay? A work of art that is being created exclusively for the audition, and they actually all have to be created exclusively for the audition, and I'll talk to you more about that. It comes up in this next little section. This work can be a drawing, painting, sculpture, mixed media. We talked about that up here. A print, a collage, an original photograph, and they give a recommendation on the size there. Video, pottery, textile, that's like a weaving. Um, etc. And this artwork should represent your strengths as an artist. So what are you really good at? What do you really enjoy working with? And that's what you want to focus on for this um, your choice assignment. Because remember again, this is the one that during the interview you're going to be talking about. So you can even talk about why you chose what you chose. So self-portrait and your choice. Now, um, this little section here, that's why um, they say this one has to be created exclusively for the audition. Now, I guess, you know, you, if you have done a self-portrait independently at home, then you could use that or a mixed media landscape, cityscape, or a still life, um, then you can use those, but it can't be anything you've done for a class assignment. It can't be anything you've done in art class with me. The artwork is to be done on your own and not as a class assignment. Okay, so here we go. Uh, students may request advice and help from their art teacher for preparing audition materials. This is the first component of that right here. Thank you for viewing this. However, no direct assistance such as dictation of decisions, that means I can't tell you what to do, or hands-on help by parents, teachers, or friends will be permitted. The process of preparing a portfolio, interviewing, and participating in the workshop for TRIDAC should be a valuable and positive learning experience experience for all participants and I really think it will be I want you to make sure that during this whole thing I mean it's hard work but it's art so I want you to also make sure that you're having fun with it that's um, part of the idea here is that it's something that you enjoy doing now here's just some technicalities on how to present your finished work um, let me say just about this guys I can talk to you about your work you can come to me with questions I just can't tell you, do this, do it like that, do it exactly like this. They want this to be original work that comes from you, not um, that's coming from an adult. Okay, um, and we can talk more about that if you have questions that come up. So, the artwork should be presented in a manner that is appropriate for display, mounted on colored construction paper or poster paper, and you can just, you know, take a piece of construction paper and use a glue stick or double stick tape behind the artwork so that no tape or glue is visible and then you can mount your artwork there to have a little illustration on a colored piece of paper just so that it's um, it's it's framed there mounted so that it's appealing when the judges will look at it no notebook paper guys don't use notebook paper and if you need paper I can provide you with that so if you have material things that you need you can come to me for those um, must be original work of the students no copyrighted characters 
okay? So no cartoon characters or things that other artists created, like comic book characters or manga. So none of that. It's got to be all your original work and your original ideas. All right. Each student should prepare a portfolio folder made of poster paper stapled or taped on three sides. Write the following information on the portfolio cover before you arrive for the audition. And it's got this information. So at the, um, I think they even have them at the grocery store, those big poster papers. So you'll get a big poster paper. You know, I'm not sure, but they're, they're pretty big. You're going to fold it in half. I think most of your work is going um, is going to fit inside that. It's one of those big papers. Fold it in half and I would just give a few staples or you can tape it along the edge. Okay, So it's solid here but it's open here so you can put all your work inside and all that information right here needs to be on the outside of that portfolio. So just take a sharpie and write that on the outside of that portfolio. This is a way to just contain and all your work and keep it organized. Also here you'll notice on the border or base of each artwork, write or tape the number corresponding to the assignment above. So what that means is say this is my um, number one assignment or whichever one, but say this one is number one. Take a little tape and put a number one there so that the four pieces that are in your portfolio, if they're looking at it and you're not there with them, they'll know which one um, is fulfilling which assignment. Okay, so that's all that means. All 2D work, that means flat, okay? Three-dimensional work, like if you created a pottery, that's gonna be a three-dimensional work. Um, so all your flat work should go in the portfolio folder and be brought to the audition. And if you're creating a pottery or a three-dimensional work, then you can put this number on the base or the bottom, or probably even if you're carrying it like in a box, in the box that you're carrying it in. All right, so this is Good Luck from Miss Dot Vaughn. This is the former middle school teacher at Carolina Springs Middle. She's a great art teacher, but I also want to say good luck from Miss Tweeden. And if anything comes up and there's any way I can help you, any questions I can answer, then you guys can come by and talk to me. You can call me or email me as well. All right, I'm proud of you. I'm excited that you are taking on this. And don't forget to have fun during the whole process. I think it should be an enjoyable one for you. Thank you.